Hey guys, welcome once again to the Guy Block Podcast. As always, your host, Orlando Rodriguez. Now, I just want to get this out of the way and I'll say it again at the end. But just want to tell you guys, you know, thank you for listening. We are growing. And to help us with that growth, to help me with this growth of this podcast, I might really appreciate it if you go to iTunes, leave us a five star review. It helps other people find this podcast. It helps it helps it grow, which will allow me, you know, to get more ads, which I'm going to work how I do it. Don't worry. It's not going to be, I don't want to ever do any mid rolls, but I do want to say, you know, at the beginning and at the end, let you know how, how this is working and to, you know, be able to have more time and, and to be able to invest in better equipment um, to make a better quality show for all of you. Now, Having said that and gotten that out of the way, we're back. It's been a while. Now, I know I've made quite a few episodes um, last month, but, you know, a lot of them centered around the whole Mayweather-McGregor build-up, mega-show, spectacle, once-in-a-lifetime event. But what about wrestling? It's been a while, right, guys? So for those of you that are listening in, you know, because you want to get a little bit of a wrestling fix, today's your episode. Um, But as I like to do, I'm not going to go over everything. I'm going to go over one thing. And the one thing we're going to talk about today is that John Cena Roman Reigns promo. Wow. Now, a lot of guys, gals, went out there and on their awesome blogs and podcasts and everything have gone out and given their opinion. I wanted to do the same, but as always, I like to do things just a little bit different. So I like to wait a little bit because when you wait, more information comes out. And some of that information is true, some is fake, some are just, you know, rumors, and then some are truths, or at least the truth that WWE wants to sell or that legit sources want you to believe. So, if you're a wrestling fan and you follow WWE, you've heard about this promo. At the very least, if you didn't watch uh, Monday Night Raw, you've seen it on YouTube, you've seen it somewhere. You've heard it somewhere. If you watched it, cringe. It was great, but uh, Roman Reigns being Roman Reigns and Cena being Cena. So, it, it it was really good. A really good TV moment. It was... I mean, I can't complain about it. I don't think there was anything wrong with it. It was a good a good piece of TV for wrestling. And it was interesting to see the interaction between the two. It was also interesting to see the different levels between, you know, the mega superstar that's been pushed that that has been favored that has been everything for the last 10 out of his 15 year career versus the new one the new chosen one that for the last five years and at least three years of his career has been pushed as this is the guy no pun intended that we have to get behind and seeing how they reacted it did kind of magnify what works for one and what doesn't for the other. Meaning, how are both of these guys in the same situation, quote-unquote, um, where they're both getting pushed by the company, they're both the favorite of the company, they're both, you know, everything is done so to appease them and to make them look good. And somehow... Crowds have hated it for both when this is done. Nobody's been happy that this has been done for either one. But somehow, John Cena has been able to take that and turn it into some kind of badge of honor and make it work for him where he still sells a lot of merch, where he still brings in the ratings, where his matches really, really matter. 
and where his promos, although sometimes, maybe even a lot of times can be annoying, are still must-watch TV. Versus Roman Reigns, who granted has less time going in at this, but seeing a guy that is not as comfortable on the mic, who puts on great matches, I will not take that away from Roman Reigns, but is not capable of, at least at this point in time, of, of doing what John Cena does. It, it's very interesting. For those of you that didn't see it, I'm just going to give you a synapse because you really just YouTube it, watch it, um, take, it up, take it all in, man. But the truth is, um, what happened was simple. It's a contract signing for a No Mercy match between Roman Reigns and John Cena. That's the setup. John Cena, the free agent, is now on Raw, and he's going out to sign the contract. And he does a promo where he shoots on Roman Reigns, talks about him being favored, talks about him supposing, you know, allegedly being the guy, talks about the fact that, you know, the only reason John Cena is around is because Roman Reigns isn't doing his job of becoming number one, and that John Cena as a part-timer does it better than Roman Reigns as a full-timer. Yes. So that's spoiler alert coming in late, but that's the gist of what he said. Trust me, you should still watch it. I want to watch it again um, because it's all in the delivery. Roman Reigns, for his part, did what Roman Reigns does, which is he tried to regurgitate all these memorized lines that he had and at one part forgot them, you know, sounded a little robotic, did not match the intensity of, of John Cena, and honestly felt like he was played, like he was not at that level. And that's not good for Roman Reigns. It did not look good. Um, it did not look good that the Chosen One is unable to defend himself um, versus John Cena on the mic. And it goes back to, if you ask me, you know, just on first instinct, right after watching it, I would say it goes back to a couple of things. First, John Cena does want the best for WWE. He will bury people. Let's not get it twisted. Let's not, you know, act like he doesn't. Let's not act like John Cena is there trying to make everybody better um, and it just comes out wrong. No, he buries people. However, that's how he works. And what I mean by that is, he buries people that allow themselves to get buried. Meaning, John Cena takes risks. John Cena is well aware that he can take risks that, that other people can't take and survive. However, he's also aware, well aware of that because when he couldn't take, when he shouldn't have been taking those risks, he took them and they worked out in his favor. This isn't for everybody. There are people that, that will never take those risks because they don't want to lose their job. They don't want to go to the Indies. They don't want it, you know, want to think about what happened. To, I'm going to lose my biggest paycheck that I've ever had in my career. If I say the wrong thing, if I say what they didn't want me to say, despite the fact that I think I could say something better. So John Cena is trying to push guys, you know, and bully them or bury them to try to get them to come back with the same energy and for them to take some of those risks to elevate their careers. Because very few people will become superstars, true superstars, without taking a risk or two to establish their character. Roman Reigns, the chosen one, is kind of a sad story. His story isn't done yet, but so far, in the sense that for me, it's sad, like, not sad like, oh, I'm crying, it's not sad like I'm depressed, but sad like, it's sad that this guy that has been chosen, that does have a certain level of favoritism in the company, has not taken advantage of that at all. Roman Reigns could go out there and say what he wants to say, and if it works, he will be rewarded, and if he doesn't, 
If it doesn't, he'll get a slap on the wrist. So the risk reward ratio, there's for very little risk, a slap on the wrist, there's a very big reward. If it works out, you are the next superstar. You will be established, not just by the company, but by the WWE universe. You will be accepted. Instead, we get these scripted promos where Roman Reigns keeps forgetting his lines. And despite the fact that some people will bend over backwards to defend everything he does, his promos are not great. They're not great. Don't blame the writers. Don't blame anybody else. They're not great because he takes zero risks to establish his character. He should know his character better than anybody. He should know what the voice of his character is. He should know how his character speaks. And with all of that, when he sees a promo that is bullshit, he should be able to take that and say, okay, but when doing this live, this is what I'm going to do. And not tell anybody, just go out there and do it. And deliver it how it has to be delivered. The retweets, the YouTube hits, the Twitter comments, that is what will give him the approval necessary to do it again and again and again. And before he gets that approval, he's going to get a few slaps on the wrist. You know, but nothing big. What, they'll make him lose a match? They've already made him lose matches. You know, what, they're going to demote him to a lesser title? Already done that. There's nothing that they will do to him. They will not fire him. So, what's the risk? Come on, man. Take a risk with your career to take it to the next level and to give fans what they want. Because we can tell... That that BS with which he speaks, it just, it's not him. It's not his personality. It's got no swag. It's got no confidence. Meanwhile, when we see a little bit come out, you feel different about it. But he doesn't do it. He's afraid to. And that's what John Cena took advantage of. That's what John Cena pointed out. That's what John Cena, that's why he did what he did. Because if you're not willing to take, take those risks, you deserve to get buried. It is what it is. You're not going to be great if you're just trying to be very good. So that, that's what's happening. Roman Reigns is content with being very good. He does not want to be great. At least he's shown no signs of life of wanting to be great. So it's, it's very weird. That, that's what I think. Now, the reason that I like to wait for um, these stories, you know, for situations like this, so for a couple of days to pass and see what happens, is to see, you know, feedback from other people, feedback from every, you know, podcast and articles and everything else, but also to hear what comes out of WWE next after they've seen how it's been received. And what do you know it? Now we're getting news from the Wrestling Observer newsletter that that contract signing went exactly as planned. That's how it was scripted. That they scripted the shooting from the hip. They scripted the breaking the fourth wall. That it was scripted that John Cena would say what he said and that Roman Reigns would stand there like a freaking idiot and take it. That was scripted. Really? Really? You want me to believe that that was scripted? See? That's why I like to, to see these things come out. Because this doesn't sound so much as, oh, that was the plan? Oh, okay, I can take that. As much as it sounds like, uh, let's say that was the plan, because we're going to look really, really bad if it looks like John Cena just went out there and did his thing and embarrassed our number one guy like that without our permission. So let's just say that that was the plan. I mean, let's be serious. What you do as wrestling fans, if you follow WWE, you know how much Vince loves Roman Reigns. You know how he feels about him. And you think Vince... Even when trying to make Roman Reigns look bad, what would he do? He'd make him lose a match. He'd make him lose multiple matches. 
he take him down on the card. That's his M.O. That's what Vince does. Maybe have him get beat up. Maybe have him seem as ineffective. When has Vince wanted somebody to cut a promo on another guy to make his top guy look like shit? You know. Montreal Screwjob proves my point. Any other examples you can get will always fall into the same categories. Enzo, you know, have the guy beat up. Have the guy look like shit in his wrestling. Have him not win. Have him take losses. Take less titles. Take lesser titles. You know, become a less important component of the storyline. But if the guy is cool, he needs to still look kind of cool. If the guy is is strong, he still needs to look kind of strong, but just can't get it done. That's what Vince does. Vince would not orchestrate this type of promo. He might give John Cena a green light to say whatever he wants because he's tired to maybe light a fire under Roman. That I can see. You know, John, I really want you to give it to him. I want you to, to push him. Push him. You know, that, 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 that sounds like Vince. Push him to the brink. Make him mad. Like, things like that, that I imagine Vince. Like, telling John, you can go in there and do your thing, but I want you to light a fire under his ass. I want to see, versus you, who has, you know, always delivered, how does he react under that pressure? And maybe that's what he needs to, to really cut a promo, how it's supposed to be cut. Maybe that's what he needs to let loose and talk in his own words and really take a risk. And what did Roman do? Are those are, are are those crickets? Um, uh, do you guys hear anything? Cause he did nothing. He stood there. He took it. He forgot his lines. And at the end, he signs a piece of paper, slams the table, and doesn't even hit him. Ooh, badass! It's just it's almost comical that the comp- company wants to take credit for this, except for the fact that they're just trying to, you know, save their investment in Roman and I'm not saying this is the end of his career because it will not be he will be a superstar he will be a main event level superstar but unless he gets it together he's not reaching that John Cena Shawn Michaels Undertaker The Rock Stone Cold he's not reaching that level it just doesn't look like he has it in him to even want to reach that level. To take some risk for himself. Because all of those names I've mentioned have taken risks. The Undertaker became a biker for a while. Just to, you know, freshen himself up. No, no need to say about Shawn Michaels having two amazing careers. Bret Hart, even. Stone Cold, everybody knows that story. The Rock, Triple H, John Cena. Roman Reigns is nowhere near that level, and his trajectory doesn't look like he'll get to that level. He'll be a great wrestler. He'll be a a great, great wrestler. Like, but really, he won't be a superstar. He won't be other level. He won't be amazing like like all of those others. He'll just be great. He'll be a you know the definition of of wrestling great, which is he'll be a very good wrestler. You know, right now, he's not even the most interesting member of the S.H.I.E.L.D. So it's, it's, I don't know. But I like to see this come out. I like to see what WWE has to say. This just tells me, uh, he didn't do what we wanted him to do. But let's put something out there to, you know, take care of him. Um, he wasn't ready. Which is, at this point in time, at what time is Roman Reigns going to be ready? At 40? Is that what we're going for here? Like, the guy can put on good matches. He can put on great matches. He can put on amazing matches, depending on who he's in there with. But then the guy can't talk. He's with his vest every day, which is stupid. I hate the vest. Hate it. Why does he need it? He's in wrestling. Nobody's carrying a gun. Stone Cold Steve Austin isn't in there going after Brian Pillman. Why does he need the vest? But he doesn't take it off for anything. It's stupid. 
He's the only one from the shield that still dresses like he's in the shield. The shield has been broken up for years. Well, like, what the hell? So, it's no risk. He's not, he doesn't take any risk on how he dresses. He doesn't take any risk on how he talks. He doesn't take any risk on anything. He's content, people. And this is where we... Like, I don't hate him. And I don't think he's not talented. But we need to be able to call a spade a spade. And if you're looking at him, and you don't see a wrestler that is content, content with the paycheck he receives, content with his level in the company, content that whether, you know, he's going for the world title or for the U.S. title or for no title, his merch is still selling. Content with if the company is doing great or not, he's not pushing for either or as long as he's getting paid. Like, if you don't see that, then fine. I'm not going to say you're a crazed fan. I'm not going to say that, you know, you're a shill or that no matter what you're going to... But you have to recognize there's something missing in him. He's not taking any risks. I'm not saying he has to, but I'm saying if he is to be what the company wants him to be, he needs to. Either that, I mean, fine. He's never going to go back there and say, hey, I'm not the guy. You know, because he'll get demoted and maybe fired eventually right now being able to walk that line of oh but i'm saying everything you want me to say but i'm dressing how you want me to dress but i'm coming out how you want me to come out it's just keeping him alive keeping his career alive you know he's oh he's a good looking guy you know he wrestles really well he's at great matches with quite a few people yada 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 and he'll have a great match with john cena he will but besides that Will that make him great? Will it make him amazing? Will it take him to the next level? I doubt it. Just because he's not trying to get there. I'm not saying he's not. He's just like, if I get there, I get there. He's one of those. He's one of the, if I make it to that level, then I made it to that level. But it's not an active, like John Cena, his goal was to be at that level. His goal was to be that. AJ. Even Kevin Owens, two people that John Cena mentioned by name that obviously he has more respect for, those two will get to that level because that's what they're striving for. They're not going for this middle card status. They're not going for main eventing just normal shows. They want to not just main event pay-per-views. They want to main event WrestleMania multiple times. That is their goal. They'll achieve it, maybe they won't, but they'll be remembered as two guys with a lot of guts that did everything that they could to achieve that. Roman Reigns is not doing everything that he can. I, I don't know. So, I thought it was a great promo. I believe that maybe John Cena... I believe John Cena got a green light from Vince McMahon to light Roman up. But I believe the purpose was probably to get Roman fired up and get him to, you know show more emotion and show more fire and give something else something extra and Roman didn't and now they're putting out statements to say no 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 that was the plan the plan was because oh technically it was I mean we told John Cena he could do that but Roman didn't do anything did he do what he was asked maybe probably yeah but did he do what they wanted him to do no and I know the whole, well, if they wanted something else, they should have told them. Yeah, but you can't tell somebody to be fired up. You know, you can't tell somebody, hey, here's your script, but go off the cuff. Roman Reigns sees the script, and he'll take the easiest route, which is, I'm memorizing the script. Doesn't do it very well, but that's the route he, he chooses to go on over and over and over again. You give him a script, he could go off the cuff, he'll freaking work this ass off to just stay stick to the script because it's easier for him he thinks than just being himself eh that that's Roman Reigns career it's gonna be an eh but he had great matches and when you think oh that match was great oh that match was great oh that match was great but as a whole right now eh I hope that John Cena can get him fired up because if John Cena can't do it, I don't see who can. That, that's really what I think.
As always, this is Orlando for the Guy Blog Podcast. Let me know what you think. Orlando at theguyblog.com. That's the email at the Guy Blog on Twitter, on Instagram, everywhere. And as I mentioned in the beginning, let's get more people on this podcast by leaving a five star review on iTunes. I really appreciate it. It really helps us grow, continues, you know, to keep this going. So that's all I can say, guys. Thank you for everything. Thank you for listening. Talk to you soon. Bye, guys.